Here we're gonna begin looking at the notion of the derivative of a function and differentiability of a function. So let's look at a definition. So if we've got a function f from a to r, where a is a subset of the real numbers, the derivative of f at a is defined to be, well, we say it's f prime of a, which is equal to the limit as x approaches a of f of x minus f of a, over x minus a. So this is pretty similar to the limit definition of the derivative that is generally given in a calculus one class. In fact, there's usually like a change of variables that you could apply to this to get to that limit. Then next, if this limit exists and is finite, but I didn't write that there, we say that f is differentiable at a. If this doesn't ex exist, then it is not differentiable at a, and then in fact, it doesn't have a derivative there. Okay, so let's look at the geometry of the derivative. So I've got this curve right here, which is f of x, or maybe it's the graph y equals f of x. And then here I've got a secant line between some test point x and then our goal point a, and that secant line is given in orange. And now this limiting action occurs by pushing this point x towards this point A. And I've put X to the left of A, but you could also have X to the right of A. And notice as X trends towards A, in other words, this point right here trends towards this point right here, the secant line trends into the tangent line. So notice the slope of the secant line is given by f of x minus f of a over x minus a. That's just the change in the y component divided by the change in the x component. And then as you take this limit, you get the slope of the blue line, which is the derivative, or it's this limit as x approaches a of that slope of the secant line, which we call f prime of a, or the derivative of f at a. Okay, so let's maybe go ahead and clean this up and then we'll look at some examples. So our first example is gonna start pretty simple by deriving the well-known power rule. So let's suppose we've got n, which is a natural number, a is any real number, and then we've got f of x equals x to the n. So our goal is to find f prime evaluated at a and see if this corresponds to what we learned in calculus. So this is going to be the limit as x approaches a of f of x, so that's gonna be x to the n, minus f of a, so that's gonna be a to the n, all over x minus a. Okay, great. And now what we wanna do is recall the factoring formula for this difference of n powers. So I can rewrite this as the limit as x approaches a of x minus a times x to the n minus one plus a times x to the n minus two plus all the way up to um, a to the n minus two times x plus a to the n minus one. So this is like a big generalization of the difference of squares formula and the difference of cubes formula. So let's maybe recall that real quick. So x squared minus a squared would be x minus a times x plus a and then x cubed minus a cubed would be x minus a, and then x squared plus ax plus a squared. So this is like the logical generalization of that. And then we still have this x minus a in the denominator. Now we can just go ahead and cancel this numerator in the denominator, and we're gonna be left with the limit as x approaches a of x to the n minus one plus a x to the n minus two, all the way down a n minus two x plus a n minus one. Great. But now we know that each of these limits exist from our earlier study about limits, and we've got this sum rule for limits. So all we have to really do is plug a into all of these. So we're gonna have a to the n minus one plus all the way up to a to the n minus one. And the big question here is how many of these do we have? But we have n in total. And you can do that just by counting up here. So notice here we've got a to the zero, a to the one, all the way up to a to the n minus one. So that's n total terms. So in other words, we get this thing is n times a to the n minus one which is what was expected. Okay, so in conclusion, we found the derivative of f at every real number. So what that tells us is that this function f is differentiable at all 
points A and R. Great. So let's maybe go ahead and clean this up and we'll look at a non-example. In other words, a function which is not differentiable somewhere. For our next example, we're going to look at the absolute value function. And so I want to recall that the absolute value function can be defined in this piecewise way as x if x is bigger than or equal to 0 and negative x if x is less than 0. So now we can find the derivative of this function at lots of different points. So let's first of all suppose that a is bigger than 0 and then calculate f prime of a. So notice that's going to be this limit as x goes to a of the absolute value of x minus the absolute value of a over x minus a. But now since a is bigger than 0, we know that the absolute value of a is just equal to a. And now since x is approaching a, all the important values of x are also positive. So that makes the absolute value of x just equal to x. So we've got x minus a over x minus a. So in other words, the derivative here is 1. And then furthermore, we can do the same kind of thing if a is strictly less than zero. So here we have f prime of a, that's going to be the limit as x goes to a of absolute value of x minus absolute value of a over x minus a. But in this case, since a is less than zero, absolute value of a is negative a. And then since x is approaching a for all of the important values of x, x is negative, so this is equal to negative x. So next, we can take those two minus signs and cancel them. And notice that the numerator is the opposite sign of the denominator, but that's all. So in other words, this cancels down to negative 1. So we do have a derivative at positive values of a and negative values of a. In other words, it's differentiable at positive and negative values of a. Now what we want to do is claim that f of x equals absolute value of x is not differentiable at 0. OK, so let's maybe do that by the definition. So we need to look at this limit as x approaches 0 of absolute value of x minus absolute value of 0 over x minus 0. In other words, we've got the absolute value of x over x. And then the next thing that I want to notice is that this limit does not exist. And that's because if we look at the two one-sided limits, we get different values. So if we do the limit as x goes to 0 from above of absolute value of x over x, we get 1. Because if we are above 0, this absolute value of x equals x. But if we do the limit as x goes to 0 from below of absolute value of x over x, we get negative 1. And that's because in this region, the absolute value of x equals negative x. But 1 is obviously not equal to negative 1. So since those two one-sided limits don't match, this limit does not exist. So what we have is a function which is differentiable everywhere except 0. OK, I'm going to clean this up, and then we're going to look at one general result before we're done. Now we're going to look at this nice result that says that if f is differentiable at a, it is continuous at a. So let's see how this goes. So I want to see what we are given. So we are given that the limit as x goes to a of f of x minus f of a over x minus a, which we'll call f prime, exists and is finite. Great. And then what we want to show is that the limit as x goes to a of f of x equals f of a. So that is equivalent to continuity. Or that's equivalent to continuity as long as um, you are not at an isolated point. But isolated don't, points don't really make sense when you're talking about differentiability in the first place. OK, great. So, but notice that this guy right here is equivalent to showing that the limit as x goes to a of f of x minus f of a equals 0. And that's actually a little bit more helpful because that's what we have right here. OK, great. So now let's get to it. So notice that the limit as x goes to a of f of x minus f of a so that's going to be the same thing as the limit as x goes to a of f of x 
minus f of a over x minus a times x minus a. So we just multiplied the function that we are limiting by one, but the version of one that we multiplied by was x minus a over x minus a. And now we are given that the limit of this object, which is squared in green, exists. And then it's easy to see that the limit of this object in blue also exists. And both of those are finite, so we can use the algebraic limit theorem to break those up into two limits. So this is going to be equal to the limit as x goes to a, f of x minus f of a over x minus a. So that would be like the green box times the limit as x goes to a of x minus a. So that would be like the blue box. Great. But now this green box is just going to become f prime of a because we assume that existed and that's finite as well. And then this limit right here is just zero. So in other words, the whole thing is zero. So notice that we have on the left hand side, the limit of this difference. And then on the right hand side, we have zero. But if the limit of this difference is zero, then that tells you that the limit as x goes to a of f of x equals f of a, which is exactly what we needed for this to be continuous at a. Now, if it's continuous at a, is it necessarily differentiable at a? Well, no, it's not. And actually, our absolute value function example proves that. OK, so that's a good place to stop.